uh, I will explain the code briefly. So here is the uh, text free processing that I just explain this on the PowerPoint. Let me just use the common library like the string R E N N L D K. So N L D K is a library for the natural language toolkit. We call it the natural language toolkit. And this is string, and this is the R E for the regular expression. So we learn about how to uh, normalize the sentence. We can transform to low case. So here is a function. Okay. I hope that until now you know about the function in Python. So if I call this function, then let's make the text lower. Then yes, all the string will be in the low case. So let's say that input string is like this one. Yeah, hey, did you know that blah, blah, blah. And then let's make it as a lowercase. So this will be in the lowercase. We want to remove numbers. So you know in the numbers removal, we can use the regular expression. On Tuesday, we learn about the regular expression. We can use D to represent the digit. And then, yeah, if you have some more uh, characters after D, for example, I want to detect class or other things. Okay, so you can use this one. So I use the sub. Okay, sub means yeah, we will uh, remove it. So we will remove it and then connect with the plus the consequence of the text. So here I have the uh, three balls in this box and plus in the other one. So now when we remove the numbers, it becomes there are balls in this back and number in the other one. If we want to convert the numbers, into words there is one library we call it inflect so we can apply inflect engine but this is for english okay. so if you want to use with other kind of language you need to check what are the proper library for that language so i'm going to convert the numbers so first let's just split so it means after we have the string, let's split into the words. And then, yeah, I'm going to check whether the words contain digit. Hope that you already know the Python is digit. Okay, so this is the embedded method. If it is a digit, then let's convert it to numbers. So number two words, we are going to change this one and the new string will be pen. So pen means we will get a list of it. If not digit, then let's just append the word as it is. And at the end, let's join with the new string. So for example, if I have the three, there are three balls in this bag and twelve in the other one, then yeah, we just apply with the uh, inflect library. So we just apply with the inflect engine within the method number two words and the Digit three, it becomes three. The digit twelve, it becomes twelve. If you need to remove the punctuation, 
So the punctuation, you can use the str. str is the string library. And then you, know, you can check the punctuation. After you check the punctuation, then yeah, you can just use this method translate. And yeah, we will remove all the punctuation from that sentence. So it becomes like this one. So this is from the str library. If you want to move, remove the white space, so you can use the join and split. So here, I want to remove any single white space. So if there is a single white space, then let's join. And after we split it, let's join. So that's the very simple. Yeah, of course, you can modify this one. How many white space do you have in your words? So here, there are some white space and here we can remove them. To remove the stock words, we need to use some kind of uh, more advanced or more libraries. In this case, I use the NLTK. Okay? And in the NLTK, we have the corpus. So in the corpus, we can have a list of stop words. So the stop words has been defined by this library. So you can just use it. And you can also use the tokenize from the NLTK. So that is the word tokenize. So let's just import it. And then oh, we just import it at the top one and then download the stop words and download the pang. This is another library in the NLTK that we needed for doing the stop words. So the stop words in the NLTK, yeah, there are some languages. For example, yeah, you can download the stop words for the English. So if you want to download the stop words for Korean, yeah, you need to check. If you want to download the stop words for Italian, Spanish, then you need to change these words. And then let's tokenize the text. After we tokenize the text, so we will check. We will filter the text. How do we filter? So we need to check if the words is in the word tokens and if the word is not in the stop words if the word is not in the stop words so we'll make in the list yeah, i hope that you understand this this comprehension so let's see if i use this one this is a sample sentence and we are going to remove the stop word from this. So the result will be this sample sentence when remove stop words. For the stemming, uh, I will just use the Porter stemmer. Actually, there are other kind of algorithm, but Porter is the most popular algorithm for stemming. So I'm mean using the, again the word tokenize and I call the porter stemmer. In this porter stemmer, we need first to tokenize. It means from a sentence, we will split into token or into words. And after that, we want to stem. So stem means I want to normalize the word into the basic form. And the basic form is by suffix stripping. 
Starting swimming in this. We remove the ending. We remove the ending. The ending and so on. So you can see this one. If I run. So the data science use scientific methods, algorithms, and methods of processes. So the stemming result is data science without E. Use, so we remove the S. Scientific, because this is the algorithm from Porter. Yeah, of course, the result is not that perfect. Okay, so you can see the result. And I assure you also the simple lemma addition based on the NLK library. So we use the word that lemma addition. Actually, there are some other kind of lemma uh, library. But let me use the word that. And again, we, are, we need to use the pound and the word that resources. So for this lemmatizer, we call the lemmatizer, and then we do the same one. So we just call the word tokens, and then do the word tokenize. So it means we will make the sentence into words. And then check the lemma of every word when the word is in the token. Run this. If you see this one, the result is better. Okay. The result more represent the word like data science use. But use now it become as scientific method, algorithm, and many type of processes. So it is better than this one because this is the word scientific is missing. The word many is given. In this case, we can just use use, and yeah, it is a choice. Okay, um, I will. Explain this post figure after I finish the lexical analysis in this case. There are some additional lexical analysis. It is more advanced. It is more uh, in the morphological or in the linguistic part. We call it the POS or part of speech. So if we want to have a sentence X, so we can predict its part of speech sequence Y. So the input, it is the tokens that sentence may have ambiguity. The output, most appropriate text by considering its definition and context. So the relationship with adjacent and related words in phrase, sentence, or paragraphs. For example, if you have the structure, okay, then it will be easier for you to predict. For example, I like to. So if you have the word I like to, what will be the next? Okay, the option is I like to read books. But there might be another kind of word. I like to eat rice. Or there will be another word like I like to drink cola. Or I like to listen to music and so on but the word i like to will be the same and we need to predict what will be the best from this three words and what would be the possible next word so we use the pos the part of speech pack okay what is the pack so there will be a lot of pack 
So I cannot explain all the tech. If you want to look at the tech, there are many resources for the tech. For example, ERP. It is the personal pronoun. 3BP. So it is for non third person singular person. 2, it is sent to PEB. It is the verb in the base form. And NS, it is non and plural. So here. I is the PRP, like is VBP, two is two, read is top in the basic form, and books it is noun in the plural form. But this might be challenging because different POS tags you know, for the same token. When you tokenize, I love you. So in this case, love is alcohol. Love is Hongsa. Okay. But when you have this sentence, all you need is love. In this case, love is now. Then yeah, it is challenging to determine what is the tag. As you know before, yeah, it can be verb. Yeah, tag can be verb, tag, tag can be also noun and also etc. So the tagging algorithm. First we can manually annotate corpus that is already processed by the machine learning algorithm and then we use the tagging algorithm so there are many tagging algorithms so we can process the text using the learn parameters yeah you can use the decision trees you can use the hidden markup model you can use the support factor machine or some more um, detail like the brill taker transformation based papers and method show Oh, by the way, I uploaded a new materials. I updated something here to make more better understanding for you. So I make some examples more for this POS. So in the POS, there are some uh, strategy. We call it strategy. So the first strategy is the point-wise prediction. Point wise prediction means it predicts its token attack individually using a classifier. Um, this is the mathematical. So it is to input the features for the tag prediction. First, we need to know whether the word is yeah, the word is the context of the word. Suffix, prefix. And we need to understand the neighborhood word information. Do you still remember what is suffix? Suffix means the end of the word. Okay. So the end of the word can be, uh, let's say we have word S. So the suffix plus S. In this case, there is no suffix. If we have learn, so the suffix is t, or we use this one. The suffix is ed. Okay, so the suffix is the end of the word. But prefix, it is the start of the word. Something in the beginning of the word. Now let's say if I will have a function. And I have the WJTJ. The WJTJ equals to one if the suffix of the word, so let's say the W is the word, and the T is <coughs> the tag. Okay. So if the word, the suffix of the word is ING, and the TJ, the tag, is PBG. So what is PBG? I give you this one. Okay, so you can take a look on the below part. 
PBG means the chairman or the present participle. So if this condition is true and this condition is true, then the function equals to If not, it's G. So yeah, this is the formula. Even by any condition, so I want to know uh, what is the probability of that particular fact. So for example, Alice is writing very nicely. So in this case, it is the present participle. Present participle means I have the word write or go. After is, it will be followed by ing. So the traffic is ing. And okay, present participle means this is belong to this category, PBG. Okay, then the probability is one. Let's see the second example. As this writing is very nice. In this case, writing also, but we have the ing means this is a noun. Okay, so it's different. This grammar is general. And okay, this also belongs to this format, this type. And okay, it follows with this condition. So the function or the probability will be one. The point-wise prediction, we just look at the particular text. So we just follow the writing and then check what is the possible text. This is writing, what is the possible text? And what is the probability of this writing being present participle? What is the probability of this writing being a chair? There is another kind of strategy we call it probabilistic model. In the probabilistic model, we want to know the find the most probable text sequence given the sentence. So I have this sentence. And okay, I have this text sequence. J, J, N, 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 R, B, N, N, and so on. So given this sentence, what is the probability that the sequence is lacking? If it is high, then okay, we can select this post value. There's another kind of strategy, we call it the generative sequence model. So we use the probability using the bias rule. The bias rule means we want to know after we have that JJ, the natural is probably JJ. So we want to know what will we do for the next one. What the next thing after the JJ? Maybe, yeah, if it is difficult to understand this one, let's see with one example. So we have the word, it looks like chocolate. It, it is PRP, so I put this one, personal pronoun. Looks, it is PB or is book, like, it is the preposition or subordinating conjunction. And then chocolate. It is not. It looks like chocolate. So this is the word. Now, if I use the point-wise prediction model, so this will be the possible result from one algorithm. So I have the word it. The word it, we want to check what is the probability of being a noun? 
what is the probability of being the preposition? What is the probability being the personal pronoun? And what is the probability being a verb? So in this case, okay, the it there is a high probability of being personal pronoun. Chocolate. So we have also the same. What is the probability of being a noun? What is the probability of being preposition? What is the probability of being personal pronoun? What is the probability of being verb? Okay, chocolate. There is a higher probability that it is a noun. Okay. So we can check if we have the sentence. If we have the sentence, so let's say the text should be ERP and VB and then in and then now. So we will check this on the PRB. This 0 0.3, this is 0 0.3, so this is 0 0.3. So it means, okay, there is uh, three options for the PRB. After we select one, let's say we select it. Now, let's say what will be the next. Maybe after the PRP, it follows with the VB. Okay, we check the VB. What is the high probability of the VB? Here we have like this is 0 0.5, and we have looks 0 0.5. And then after we have VB, we go to the in the preposition. So let's see the preposition in the high probability is like okay, so it is the high possibility to be this one and so on. so this is an example of the point prediction model so one sentence we want to check one time and we can also look in the oh, sorry so uh, this is not point wise this is the probability this is the probabilistic model. So in the probabilistic model, we have the PRP, this is the personal pronoun, PB, this is the verb, IN, this is the preposition, N. This is the noun. Then, if we have the sentence S, this is the topic. Okay? This is start. And this is the end. So I can have, okay, after the start, let's start with the PRP. If it starts with PRP, okay, then we have the probability it is like 0 0.3. Okay, so we have the in 0 0.3. So we can check what is the possible next tag. The possible next tag is P, is from. So we know that in English, the structure is subject plus work plus object. And after we have the subject, we will follow it with the work. So we will follow it with work. Then, okay, the possibility of loops is 0 0.5. So the possibility of loop is 0 0.5. And then we can make some kind of probability what will be after the verb case. If it is another verb case, what is the probability? If it is I n, then what is the probability? So we will check this kind of sequence and then we will check if we get this tag then how big is the probability this is the probabilistic model for the generative sequence model so we will check based on this uh, sequence so we have the s 
is this the star thing and backslash s it is the ending so i have the starting and then the starting will be followed by tr this is wrong okay this is the probability that after we start it will be prp after we have the prp so let's check the prp what will be the next sequence after we have the prp so we have the in with the probability 0 0.33 and vb with the probability of 0 0.666 then after PRP, we can follow with the B. And then next, let's check the VB. For the VB, for N, the probability is 0 0.1. For the IN, the probability is 0 0.1. So any of this can be the next one. So let's say I choose I n. Then after I n, okay, it is followed by a number. Probability is one. Then next after noun, okay, it is ending. So we can make a sequence based on this generative sequence model. So this is the model as a result from the generative sequence. Okay, that's about the POS taking. So basically, you can uh, later we will look at the example and we can just reuse some algorithms in the library. Next, it is about the name entity recognition. Name. So it means every name we want to recognize. Name entity recognition is a subtest of information extraction that seeks to locate and classify elements in text into predefined categories. For example, the name of the person. So if we put the word Trump, okay, then we know he is the candidate of the president in US. If we put the word Paris, so we also know that this is also a person. Okay. Organization, so if we mention half, okay, we know that this is an organization or institution. Location, so if we say Seoul, we know directly that it is a city, location. Expression of time, so how if we say now, then we know this is time. Quantities. So let's say we have many. Okay, so we know this is representing the quantities. And so on. So if I have the word get me a flight from New York City. Okay, because I know the word from, so the name entity recognition can understand this is location. And then because I have the word to. This is also a location. So how can we make an algorithm? So if we know that this is the city and this is another city because we have the word from and this is the word to, so yeah, we can automatically analyze the rest. For next Thursday, okay, we know this is So we call this is the name entity recognition. So there are some approaches. The easiest one is to make dictionary. Suddenly, uh, we can make the rule base. So we can make a list of lookup, like system that recognize only entities taught in this case. The advantages is simple, fast, 
and language independent and easy to read forget. But the disadvantages, it requires a collection and maintenance of lists, and it cannot deal with name variant and cannot resolve ambiguity. So, for example, yeah, the, the most common example last time, like the, the name of the Korean president. Last time we have Moon Jae In. Okay. So, in some of the dictionary, they mention Moon Jae In with the dash. Something like this. Or sometimes some of the dictionary they put moon j in combined word like this one. In this case, yeah, we cannot recognize the name. Or yeah, we need to put all the lists into the dictionary in order to check. Okay, if you mention this name, then it is the president of Korea in the last two years. There is another method, we call it shallow parsing approach. So in the shallow parsing approach, it is based on the internal evidence. So names often have internal structures. These components can be either stored or guessed. I think in the uh, in US, I think it's easy also to recognize about the string. Or something related with the location name, Wall Street. I think in Korea it's also the same. When you mention Namsan Tower, so you can easily know that okay, it is a location, it is a name, a tower in Seoul. So if you mention like Seoul Tower, actually is also representing the same location. So you can put, yeah, this is the shell passing. So it is like just guessing with the same uh, way. Or in other case, like the street in Korea, you have the, for example, Yongin. Yongin si Choyinggu. Yongin si Gihonggu. Yongin si Sujigu. So those kind of structure we already have. So we just put those in the in the normal structure. So if everything starts with Yongin, Si, Cho, In, Gu, then okay, this is the best. There are other algorithms, but I will not explain. Okay? If you want to uh, try with the NER, which is a model of this, there's some algorithm from the MIT, or there's some other with the conditional random fields. And also there are some kind of neural networks to understand the name entity recognition. Okay, uh, the last part that I want to explain is about the syntax analysis. I think it's not that uh, difficult to understand this one if you understand all the tech that we learned before. So the tech it is used for the syntax analysis. And in the syntax analysis, it is the process of analyzing a string of symbols conforming to the rules of a formal grammar. So in the previous one, uh, when we do the lexical analysis, in the lexical analysis, we just focus on the token. We just focus on the word. But in the syntax analytic, in the syntax analysis, we will focus on the grammar. So we will focus what would be the next on the formal grammar. So if I have the sentence S, I know that the first will be noun phrase and be, and after noun it will be and in the verb, there might be a verb and there will be another noun. So with this kind of syntax analysis, it requires parser. 
an algorithm that computes a structure from any string given a grammar. So a grammar is necessary. So all parser have two fundamental properties. So, okay. So we can see the syntax analysis in two kind of representations. The first, it is easy to see based on the tree. So if I have a sentence, so I can check the NP, which is the noun phrase, and the PP, which is the verb phrase. Okay, if it is named John, it is verb eight, noun phrase, it is the, it means as I'm reading about the preposition or up, and now it's about the apple. We can use the list representation in the form of the list in Python. So if I have a sentence, in the sentence I have an NP now that is name of John, and then I have a VP, and the VP it is a verb that is A. And then I have a noun that is to represent the heart and apple to represent the noun. So using this kind of representation, then we can make a tree. We can make a tree to represent the syntax. However, this Tree can be diverse. This tree can be many. So not a single parsing tree due to the language ambiguity. So if the language is ambiguous, of course it will make some time something like that, more than one tree. So the lexical ambiguity, M A N U. Lexical. So one word can be used for multi parts of speech. And the lexical ambiguity causes structural ambiguity. For example, this one. Time flies like an arrow. So we can see that time flies as a noun. And the fog is this one. But in our case, actually, we know that flies is a verb. Time is a noun. So both of them, both of the three are correct. But yeah, it's ambiguous. The structural ambiguity, yeah, this is also Another issue when you do the syntax analysis. One sentence can be understood in different ways. For example, John saw Mary in the park. So, who is in the park? John in the park or Mary in the park? Okay, so this can be understood in different ways. John saw Mary in the park. So, if you use this uh, later on, when you use the tokenization, what happened? After you have the tag, after you have the tag, if we remove it, then it is also another issue. But it can be something related with the name of person okay. and so on so this kind of syntax analysis yeah, it can be ambiguous but it is important to select maybe one algorithm even though it is ambiguous but you still need to uh, analyze it so let's say in the chat gpt there are still some errors there are still some not correct result Okay, so that's what we can learn until now. Okay, so you learn about the lexical analysis and the syntax analysis in this pre-processing. And let's look at the code for a moment. 
Mm, yep, yeah. I think you can try by yourself or the code. Yeah, like this one, I use the NLTK for the post typers. So there are some libraries that you can use for the POS. Yeah, let's use this one. So this is the POS that has been defined by the NLTK. Like the, it is DET. Round is ADG. Box is noun verb and so on. So using the this kind of type, we can make the model. Yeah, if you have difficulties to understand, yeah, like Dongsa is noun, they don't sa pronoun, they don't sa adjective, don't sa verb, who sa adverb, and so on. And there are some other kind of uh, library. There are like three bank POS token. And there are some other bank for the POS. And they have different definitions. For example, CC is the conjunction, CT is the quadrilateral number, and so on. So there are so many types for this issue. And yeah, this is another example for the name entity recognition. You can check later. I am using the spacing to recognize this one. So in this case, okay, Congress 10, it is ORG, so it is organization. Mahua Moitra, we are not sure this one, but this on the entity, it is recognized as a person. The Supreme Court, it is organization. Lot Sava, okay, it is a person. And so on. So after we know this entity, then it will be easier for us to analyze the next. So this is using the species. This is another library. So you can take a look later. And this is from the Korean side. If you want to do the word tokenization, the result is like this one. If you use the character tokenization, the result is this one. And if you use the Alphabet tokenization. You will see like this one. Okay. Um, maybe yeah, we can discuss this one later more or after the result. Okay. I will stop here.